Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be talking about this. This is the Sega Genesis Mini 2. This actually comes directly from Sega, so huge shout out to them. Before we do all that review stuff, though, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that already. Also, check out all the social media stuff, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, as well as my new travel and adventure channel called Flying and Eating. I think you get a kick out of all that stuff, and I also just appreciate the support in general. Thank you so much. Now, let's go ahead and get started with it. Yes, this was sent to me directly from Sega for the purposes of review, so full disclosure on that. Uh, if you want to check it out, there will be a link in the description uh, to their Amazon page specifically for this, which at the time I'm recording this is actually in stock, but given how limited these are, that might change. I don't know, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and start talking about it. Now, the Santa hat, aside from the fact that it is the holidays, I kind of wanted to tell you a little personal story before we go ahead and dive into the review. If you don't care about that and you want to skip ahead, I won't take it personally, but otherwise, thank you. Um, so when I was a kid, and I've told this story many times on the channel, um, the first game console I ever got was, well, technically an Atari 2600 because my mom's like, oh, all consoles are the same. Here's a hand-me-down console, whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Of course, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a Sega Genesis. And ultimately, I got that in the Christmas of 93. And I used to have a photo of this, like a little, like little kid me holding up a Sega Genesis Model 2 in the original, like, you know, red art, you know, style box, uh, similar to that, of course, um, holding up the console. And then, you know, that was my first console. You know, this one right here is my Sega Genesis, my childhood Sega Genesis Model 2. Um, it was a big deal for me, and it was super exciting. And thanks to Uncle Sonic over here, uh, we're going to have the chance to do that again. So Christmas hat, because I'm going to get to unbox kind of like full circle, you know. Uh, so it's really cool. Uh, I no longer have the photo, unfortunately, because there was a, f a fire at my late mother's home, when which that kind of stuff was all destroyed. So... This is the new memories, as it were. Um, so thank you to the people at Sega for making that possible, for giving me those original memories and as well as being able to forge new ones. I really appreciate you. And I appreciate you guys as well for listening to me and watching and all that stuff over the years. Seriously, it means a lot. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about the console itself. Let's talk a little history with it before we actually open it. So like, if you're totally new to this, like, what is this thing? What's going on? So obviously Sega, my favorite, you know, console manufacturer of all time. I don't hide that whatsoever. Uh, they no longer make consoles. Boo-hoo. But, you know, it is what it is. However, they have been doing these, like... Uh, mini consoles like they did the Genesis Model 1 down here which I actually did a video on at the time they were cool enough to send me this uh, and the core idea was that this thing was just a cutesy little version of a Sega Genesis but had a bunch of modern toys in it so it you know had a HDMI output and it had like 40 games built in this one specifically had 42 games built in all of which were like original Genesis classic titles but they also put in some extra stuff just to kind of make it interesting a little bit of seasoning as it were like this one had uh, Mega Man Wily Wars which was never released in the United States on the Genesis. The Europeans got it. Uh, I think Japan got it. I'm pretty sure they got it, but we never got it. Um, and then there was like an unreleased version of Tetris on there. You know, stuff like that. It was very cool. And in Japan, they actually released this like little plastic kit. These are just for cutesiness. The 32X, the Sonic, and then the Sonic and Knuckles cart, as well as the Sega CD. They don't do anything. They're just plastic. There is technically, fun fact, there is actually an American version of those, but it, you're never going to find it. Uh, the only people who got those were, like, upper echelon YouTube reviewers. Like, Sega loves me. Google Sega's Bay. I come up. Even I was not on the list of people eligible for that thing. You had to have, like, a million plus followers and stuff for them to, to give you one of those. That was a very rare little item. Um, so, but all the same, I love you, Sega. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I, I actually got to be there when they first announced this one. You know, I was at Sega Fest 2019. Sega had actually brought me to it in Tokyo. Uh, and, we, you know, it was just cool to be there for the full, like, you know, timeline of this. But it came out, it was like a big retail release, you could find this one in stores, and it was awesome. You know, I did my video on it, because Sega sent me the unit, and it was, it was great. Um, I don't think I was expecting them to do another. Uh, I don't think a lot of people were, but they went ahead and they announced the Genesis Mini 2. So when they announced it, I was like, okay, well, how different could this thing really be? Like, realistically, like, you've already put on, like, most of the iconic Genesis games and all that. I kind of, I'm gonna be totally honest, I figured we were going to see, like, the same list of games plus maybe, like, ten more or something, and they were going to call it a day. No, they really went all out on this thing. So, this one actually has 60 titles on it. And interestingly, this is the part that just kind of blew my mind. There's no crossover. 
Like the games that are on this one are not the ones that are on this one. With one exception, and even that is like has a huge asterisk next to it, uh, and that exception being Space Harrier 2. Space Harrier 2 does exist on the Sega Genesis Model 1, but it's like the original version of it. Apparently, and I'm no expert on this particular game, uh, apparently the original version of that on the Genesis had like some frame rate issues and stuff going all the way back to the original release, and those, if you want to call them bugs, those issues existed in the uh, ver first version of this. Something over at Sega possessed them to go ahead and fix that release after like 30 plus years. Um, and man, 40 plus years almost. We're getting old, guys. Um, but anyway, so they went ahead and fixed that and they updated it and put that in here. And other than that, everything else on here was never on the Model 1. That's impressive. So the way they characterize it on the back is they've got 41 classic titles, which would include some of the games that were missing from this that I think people expected, like your Streets of Rage 3, Sonic 3D Blast, uh, some stuff like that. Uh, one of the there's virtual ra virtual racing, uh, one of the Toe Jam and Earls, stuff like that. They also have what they call seven bonus titles. Uh, or seven, yeah, bonus original titles, one of which is Space Harrier 2, as I had just mentioned. The others all appear to be Japanese Mega Drive games that were never released in North America, uh, presumably all translated into English, uh, which is great because that means they finally have official releases over here, which is neat. And then the one that I think shocked everybody when they first announced it is this thing has Sega CD support. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Sega CD support. Um, it comes with 12 Sega CD games. Most iconically, Sonic CD is on there. Uh, Night Trap is on there, which is, of course, the other really big famous one that helped to create the ESRB in the first place. That one doesn't surprise me that much. Once they said that Sega CD support was going to be in there, I was like, ah, but they include Night Trap. Because that game got re-released a lot recently, so I'm like, that just, that just makes sense. Why not include that? Uh, Shiny Force CD being on there is a pretty big deal, though, because that game is really expensive, so having that on there is nice. But yeah, it's it's got a whole bunch of stuff. So 12 Sega CD games, uh, plus 41 uh, classics, plus 7 bonus titles, making for a total of 60 games. Uh, very, very cool. Um, now, obviously, this one is designed based on the look of the Genesis Model 2. Although there's a little bit of an asterisk with that, which we will get into when we open it. Um, but the thing about this, though, as I mentioned before, is it is a limited release. Uh, it's, this one had a wide release. You could buy this at a Best Buy or whatever, just walking in the store. Not the case with the Model 2. The Model 2 was more fan service. That's based on the game catalog and just the quantity released. I get the sense that the Model 1 was meant to cater to kind of everybody. You know, the entire nostalgia base. Hey, you remember when you played your Sega Genesis as a kid? Well, why don't you go play it again? This one caters more to the hardcore fans like us. Um, this one, you know, because the library is much more curated to that specific type of thing. Uh, and the fact that they only released about one-tenth as many of these as they did of the first model. And they sold it exclusively through Amazon. And not even just Amazon. Amazon Japan. Like, you could buy it on American Amazon, but it was just being shipped and bought directly via, like, you know, almost like a proxy from Amazon to Amazon from Amazon Japan. Um, so, at the again, at the time I'm recording this, this is still available. Like, they just did an update because, like, it hadn't been in stock for the longest time, and now it suddenly is. So, I'm just putting that out there. The reason my video on this has taken so long, though, it's funny. Sega sent this to me. The day it arrived, I landed in Japan. So it was like, <laughs> we just missed each other, if you will. So I hadn't had time to do anything with it. Uh, and I was there for two weeks, and then I got back. I got jet lag, got to work on other things, blah, blah, blah. Just you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, funny, though, like the whole time I was in Japan, I was like, oh, I bet it'll be easier to find this there. And I thought about if I could find a Japanese one, maybe I'd pick that up because it would help the video out, whatever couldn't find it man every store we went to it's like oh yeah we had pre-orders and we had like one in stock and it's long gone and like every place that had references to it no no i'm sorry no no stock the only place i ever found it was at a used store called mandrake and they were charging like twice the retail price sucks <laughs> the, the one thing that's cool though is Japan got a little Sega CD attachment, much like this, which is a plastic thing. They got that. I don't have that. I would have bought it if I found it. Never even saw it. Uh, so maybe that'll come around someday, but in the meantime, not so much. But yeah, that's that's kind of everything I can tell you without actually, you know, using it. So let's go ahead and open it up. So taking a look at the front here, you get to actually see that it says Sega Genesis Mini 2. Uh, you see the, you know, cover design. Again, it comes with the six-button controller instead of the three-button controller like the original did. So between the two, you would actually have uh, all four, or all four. You'd have three controllers with two different designs. Um, 
I, I should point out, I'm sorry, I keep delaying the unboxing part. Before we do that though, I guess I would point out, you can also use the Retrobit wireless controllers or the Retrobit controllers. These are also Sega licensed controllers you can actually put uh, on those. I know it works on the Model 1, it should work on the Model 2 as well. So if you like the six button controller, because I think this one's wired, but you want it wireless, that exists as well. You have that option, but uh, yeah, just throwing that out there. Um, yeah, officially licensed, official product, Sega, seal of quality. I mean, it's nice to see that again. Sorry, I know it's just the nostalgia, man. Like it's all kind of a moment for me. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead, let's do it. So open it up here on the back inside the first thing you have inside is a usb micro cable uh, for power uh, you have kind of a standard just hdmi cable uh, you can use any hdmi cable you want uh, you also have we have the controller as i mentioned before the six button one um, which is nice it's fine it's I, I don't know if it's exactly the the same as the other six button controller is retro bit, I would have to like, sit there and play with it for a while. Cause I mean, obviously Sega owns both. They could do whatever they want, but I'm wondering if they literally just made the same controllers or if they actually did anything different with it. But uh, without the other one present, you know, I can't say. But anyway, it comes with that regardless. Uh, and then of course it comes with, oh, here's a little bonus. It comes with a power brick. So you don't just have to depend on USB. If you actually want to out, you know, plug it into an outlet, you have that option. And then you have the console itself. So let's move the box away. Now the console itself is individually wrapped in this like foam. There we go. Take that out. And there she is. <laughs> the Sega Genesis Mini 2. Uh, now I've seen people comment on this and it's kind of funny that they don't seem to understand why this is. So uh, the Sega Genesis Mini 2, if you've seen a Sega Genesis 2, uh, it has an LED in the center and it has a power button right there. Uh, people are like, yo, dog, why does the, the Genesis 2 doesn't have the LED and it's got this like switch instead of a, the power button? What's wrong? You know, that's, that's, it's not like that. They didn't, they made a mistake. No, they didn't. They based it on the Japanese one. Japanese Mega Drive. It doesn't have the LED and has a power switch. That's all it is. So basically they just made like the one mold for Japan and then they just repainted it more or less for North America. Like, would it have been nice to have like the full original nostalgia? Yeah, but like honestly... This is fine. It really makes no difference. It, ultimately, at the end of the day, you're getting to play the games. Yeah, the cartridge slot is still, like, movable. I wonder if it fits, you know, these are the Mega Drive, can, you know. Uh, no, this one doesn't fit because it's actually the same shape as a Mega Drive card. I wonder if, so Sonic and Knuckles, yeah, Sonic and Knuckles fits because it uses the Genesis shape. But you can actually take the little Genesis card there and put that on top, which means this Tower of Power kit should work. Yeah, see, there you go, the little 32X. It sort of fits. It actually ironically suffers from the same problem that Genesis did originally, which is that you need the little spacer for that to be stable. It is kind of funny, to be honest, like how consistent that is. They left the little Sega CD slot on there. As I mentioned, there is a special Sega CD attachment, but it makes me wonder, like, it should work just fine with this one. Um, and yeah, it does. You can totally use the original Sega CD like plastic model. It, it even fits with the ground spacer. So there's like little clips on the Sega CD. They, those same clips actually exist on the, the Mega Drive too. Like they, just like the originals, they made the effort to make all these like transformers, you know, come together and actually fit properly. That's, that's pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I would prefer to have the actual like Model 2 Genesis uh, attachment for it if I can ever find it but uh, in the meantime it, it's just it's just neat to know that it works um, it's purely plastic though it doesn't do anything it, it can't be clear enough about that like this thing will play Sega CD games regardless if you have that attachment or not um, but yeah so with this uh, as I mentioned it's a switch so you have this like red little sticker there basically to indicate when it has power which uh, at least on the Mega Drive Model 2 was not the case so that that might just be completely unique to this but that's still cool um, on the back it it has DC in for USB based power. It has the HDMI output. It also says the phrase HDMI on, HDMI on the back. Underneath, it has Sega of America information as well as the model number and all that sort of good stuff. The front has two USB controllers and there's really not much else to it. It's just kind of an adorable little chibi Sega Genesis. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is go ahead, fire it up, try it out for a while and then come back at you guys with final thoughts. Long story short, this thing is pretty cool. This thing actually really surprised me. I'm gonna be completely honest. I kind of figured they would just take the Model 1, change some of the games, and call it a day. 
they didn't do that. They actually put in a lot more effort than I was expecting. So let's just take a look at it. First of all, you can display the games kind of like you would a shelf, like I actually did back there. I appreciate that. It's the little touches that I think that went into this that are really neat. However, you can alter that by pressing B. You can do this like kind of just all the games displayed at one type of thing. If you just prefer the bigger uh, box art, etc., you can also adjust based on uh, alphabet, release date, your most recently played, etc., etc., which is very cool. Uh, it's Ultimately, you have to understand this thing is an emulator box, and so it ha it's Sega's own emulator, and therefore it can do certain things that emulators can do. Uh, one of which is save states. So, like, if you're getting part of the way through a game and you want to save and leave and do something else like you couldn't do back in the day, you can now do that and then load it up again later. In fact, if you press the reset button on here, well, in the middle of a game, it will actually, by default, bring up the uh, save state menu, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'll show that in a little bit, but I want to go over a few of the other settings. So if we open that up, You'll see a few a few things. Uh, languages, you can switch into a whole bunch of different ones. Obviously, I'm keeping it in English because that's what I speak. Uh, game options, you have screen setting options. So you can keep it in full screen or widescreen. The games are not natively in widescreen. Really, what you'd be doing here is stretching it. Some people prefer that. I don't know why, but you can do it. There are some games that are in widescreen. As weird as that sounds, we'll get back to that in a second though. Um, there's wallpaper options. Now, as I said, because games are actually four by three and you're probably using it on a modern widescreen television, you're gonna have dead space around you. Uh, so I keep it black by default because I find it to be distracting, but if you do not, there's a whole bunch of different ones they created that you can put on there if you prefer those. So that's just a matter of personal opinion. Sound settings, I think this is a neat touch and this is emblematic of who made this and how much they actually cared. Because this is something most people who even are big Sega Genesis fans do not know about, yet they took the time to put this in here. Uh, the first model of the Sega Genesis, the Sega Genesis Model 1, the bigger one, the one that this is based on, has actually on it originally a headphone jack uh, because it supported full stereo um, sound, as well as what is known as FM synthesis sound. This was something that really was more important in the Sega Master System, but technically existed in the original version of the Genesis, and so there were games that could utilize it. They took the time on this thing to give you both sound options. like why would you even care about the difference the thing is this is the superior audio experience but more people would have nostalgia for this one so they gave you the choice which one do you prefer that's up to you that is such a niche thing that they actually bothered to put in there i mad respect for that uh it has you know controller configurations you know mode button stuff like that um staff credits legal notes all that kind of thing is all in there um, which actually the, the the staff credits is pretty neat because the Sega CD like you know screen with the, the the Earth BIOS and all that comes up, which is very cool. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of these games. So as I said with uh, like um, with Space Harrier Two, they actually went ahead and made certain changes to it. So let me pull that up because they actually tell you what they did. That's cool. They said this is closer to like the arcade experience and it has release date year 2022. See, the other ones they said were introducing, mostly I thought were like Mega Drive games. Some of them were, but they actually went ahead and explained like, no, not, not only were they Mega Drive games, but like we finished up the source code and we like translated them. They put in real work. Like there's real effort in this, like to the point where it's kind of shocking, like how good that actually is. Or this one, this is a, a Sega CD game called The Ninja Warriors, um, originally released in 1987 on one platform, 93 on the Mega CD. Here, they, this version, they put in widescreen support. They put in new background music and uh, cinematic modes. I played Sonic CD for a while. Here's some, they don't even advertise this. Sonic CD has both the American and the European music. For those who don't know about Sonic CD, obviously a lot of us really like that game. The American audio for the music is completely different than what Europe and Japan got. They got, most people consider the European Japanese music to be better. Uh, but because the console was region locked and the European version runs at 50 hertz, there was really no, like, no perfect version. 60 hertz version that runs uh, region free with the superior music. It's right there. Like if you, you pull this up, you want to press, see? 
US version or EU version. That's when they're saying which version do you want. They're not referring to a refresh rate thing. They're referring to which music do you want. Like it's those subtle things that they put into this that I just find really impressive. Um, so yeah, man, I, I wholeheartedly recommend this. You know, I ran it with uh, Streets of Rage 3 for a while, Sonic CD for, for, for a while, I played a few other games, just trying stuff out. I love it. I think that this thing is super impressive. And the idea that Sega would put in that much effort at this point in time is impressive to me. Because if you think about it, if they're arguing that seven of these have never really can technically existed in, in a true Genesis form until 2022, that means in 2022, Sega officially gave us seven new Genesis games. Now, it would be cool to somehow get those, you know, put onto actual cartridges. I think that would be neat. But technically, they exist in a physical edition of sorts. And I think that that's very, very cool. Uh, yeah, things like Puyo Puyo Sun, which had never existed prior to that. There it is, the year 2022. Yeah, that's that's really cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm super thrilled with this. I think this is just super neat. So hopefully we get a Genesis 3 at some point. I don't know if it would actually look like the Genesis 3 because Majesco made that, Sega didn't. Um, and maybe it would have 32X support, who knows? What other unreleased games? Maybe some of those random Brazilian releases that were licensed and all that sort of stuff. Who knows? Pure speculation. But yeah, man, I, like I said, I kind of went into this thinking this was just going to be this plus. No, this is this was the mass market version. This is the fan version. I don't know how else to describe it. This thing is really, really something. I'm very happy with it. So huge shout out to Sega. Thank you so much for uh, hooking me up with this. Actually, let me show you the save state thing real quick just so I can um, be assured that I did in fact do that. So when you fire up a game, you know, it'll take a second. I should have mentioned, the thing is running in 720p, if I didn't already mention that, because that's the nearest neighbor resolution to what the Genesis originally ran at that is also a high definition modern resolution. Hence, it just stays at that. But let's say, for example, uh, you know, I was like, oh, I'm, I just wanna save. You just press the reset button. Instead of actually resetting, it brings up this menu, which technically can reset the game. But you can save your state, load your state, reset the game, or return back to the main menu. So that is there. You can also do that by hitting some controller configuration that I don't remember offhand, but it, it, it works either way. Oh, and yes, uh, the Genesis um, retro uh, bit controllers do 100% work on this thing. Totally confirmed. So very cool. Again, huge shout out to Sega. Thank you so much for this. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that already, and then go into the social media stuff, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, follow me and support me on all those. I really appreciate it. Check out the new channel, Flying and Eating, which is about adventuring and all that sort of stuff. I appreciate that as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all later.